nurses, if you're experiencing mission drift in your nursing career, it's completely possible to get back on course. Let's talk about mission drift and getting back on track right here on episode 142 of The Nurse Keith Show. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to The Nurse Keith Show. Thanks for being part of The Nurse Keith Nation. Whether you're listening for the very first time or you've been hanging out here with me for months or years, this podcast is all about you and your nursing career, and I'm here to share education, inspiration, and ideas that can get you moving in a positive and inspired direction. I'm a member of the Pulse Media Network of podcasters at PulseMediaNetwork.com. Check us out. You can find RNFM Radio, Your Next Shift, the Gluten-Free RN, and the Introvert Biz Growth Podcast. I want to remind you that you can help a lot of other people find the show by leaving a rating and review over on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. If you do that, please shoot me an email, let me know you left a review, and I will give you a positive, glowing shout out right here on The Nurse Keith Show to thank you for your generosity. If you want to see the show notes for this episode, head on over to nursekeith.com forward slash episode 142. Anyway, I am thrilled you're here. Let's dig right into today's topic, shall we? So folks, I've been thinking a lot about missions and visions lately, perhaps because as I record this, it is early January 2018, and the new year always brings about that notion of looking at one's mission, looking at one's vision, and reevaluating what you're doing, where you're going, where you've been, and where you want to be. And I posted a blog post over on Digital Doorway on January 8th, 2018, and it was titled Overcoming Mission Drift in Your Nursing Career. It is really important for me to talk with you about this because I hear from so many nurses who feel like they are not quite on track, they are not quite where they want to be, or maybe they used to be where they want to be, and they're not there anymore, and they want to get back. They're not feeling quite right, and I think this is a really important thing for us to think about and talk about and continue to talk about throughout our careers. Because you know what? Our lives and our careers and our needs and our desires and motivations, they change over time. So we need to be able to change with them. And of course, our career needs to change with them too. So if you are feeling adrift, if you're feeling like you are totally off course, there are probably reasons for that. And you know, It's a given, like I say in the blog post, that our career choices and what we do from day to day and month to month and year to year in our work is influenced and impacted by so many different variables. We need to think about our families, putting food on the table. We also have to look at our education and whether we're learning or not. We also have to consider our living situation, our cost of living, our marital status. There are so many things things that can happen that can determine when we're off course, when we need to realign with our original mission or vision of why we became nurses, or maybe something catastrophic or just big happens in our lives, and we need to figure out how to make that new reality in our lives work in relation to to our careers. So there's so many reasons we go off course. We need to identify when and where we did get a little bit off kilter and then figure out how to steer ourselves back in the direction that we want to be going in. So of course, just like in so many other frames of reference and ways of thinking, the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that there is a problem. That problem often manifests as burnout Compassion fatigue, boredom, listlessness. There are so many different ways that can manifest for us. And with or without professional help, we can unpack the state of our nursing career and our lives and figure out where to go next. So first, if you're feeling like you are no longer aligned with your mission, either as an individual human being or as an individual nurse or 
some combination of the two, usually we need to first look at why did we pursue nursing in the first place? Because if we look at our original vision and mission, perhaps our lives have changed significantly enough that we're no longer aligned with the reason we first came into the profession. So if you think about it, did you go into nursing for the money? Did you go into nursing for the sexy outfits and the awesome shoes? Did you go into nursing because you were influenced like me by a family legacy, by other nurses in your family, ancestors, people who came before you, or people who were nurses during your lifetime and really influenced you? Did you have a personal experience? Did you watch a nurse in action. Maybe a nurse took care of you and your mind was just blown and you were like, oh my God, I want to do that too. Or maybe a really wonderful nurse took care of your dying father or your brother or your child and you were so moved by what that nurse was able to accomplish and do as a healthcare professional, you decided you wanted to do that same thing. Or maybe you saw nursing as a solid career choice. You wanted flexibility. You wanted a decent living. You wanted a varied career path. And you saw that as the way to get where you wanted to go. So once you go back and you revisit the reason why you entered nursing at first, then you need to look at where you are now in relation to where you were then and decide, are there different choices that now need to be made? What choices did you make along the way? Maybe it's the work environments you've chosen that no longer work for you. So let's say that you have chosen to work in trauma and emergency nursing, and you've had an awesome career or maybe even a not so awesome, mediocre career. But that's what you know. That's what you do. That's what you wanted to do as a nursing student. That's what you did right out of school, and you've been doing it for 15 or 18 or 25 years, maybe even only five years, and you realize, oh my God, it's breaking down my body. I feel psychologically and emotionally drained. I am exhausted and I can't do this anymore. Or maybe you're doing emergency nursing or another type of highly physical nursing that requires a great deal of physical and emotional and psychological endurance. And you've realized that you don't have it in you anymore. Maybe you have a chronic illness. Maybe you're partially disabled now. Maybe you have elderly parents who need your care. Maybe you have a disabled spouse or child. Many, many things can come up in the course of your life that changes the course of your career. And sometimes when we don't change our career with the changes in our lives, things start to feel incongruent. Things feel out of joint and out of place. And there's a time for change. There's a time for reevaluation. And if you feel like something is lost, that that vision that you had at the beginning of your career, if it's no longer working for you, if that vision doesn't speak to you anymore, you need a new vision. So as you evaluate where you've been, where you are, and where you want to go, and you realize that things have changed, that you're off course, you're adrift, you feel like you're drowning in a sea of boredom or lethargy or anger even, there might be something that you need to do to make sure that that calculus changes. So the circumstances of your personal life, like I said, can impact your career. So we need to make sure we keep our finger on the pulse of both our career and our personal lives so that we know when changes need to happen. I've known nurses who've worked in those high stress environments like emergency nursing or even flight nursing, and things have changed in their lives and they've realized that they need something a little calmer, something a little more tranquil, and maybe they become a primary family nurse practitioner and they work in a clinic where things are calm and they know they're going to work, you know, basically nine to five or eight to six, and they can go home at the end of the day and they're going to have a whole different type of work experience. Some of us realize, like myself, and I'll tell this little story, that sometimes clinical nursing has kind of been tapped out for us. We've realized that we've reached the end of the clinical work that we'd like to do. For myself, as some of you know and some of you don't know, if you haven't listened to this podcast or read any of my writings before, I worked in home health and community health and public health and hospice for about 21 years. It's been about, yeah, about two decades. And, you know, 
there's a time that came for me where I was realizing that I was feeling pretty done, not with nursing and being a nurse and being involved in healthcare, but being on the clinical end just wasn't happening for me anymore. So I switched into a director of nursing and chief nursing officer position at a home health agency. And that worked for a while as a manager and leader. And I learned a lot. But what I was building all along as a side hustle was this thing I do of career coaching for nurses and writing and blogging and consulting and speaking at conferences and podcasting. Those are the things that really light my fire right now. I still identify as a nurse. I'm fully a nurse. Nursing is something I live and breathe and write and speak about every day. But I don't work as a nurse out in the field at this point in my career. I may get back to that when I get that itch again, but right now that itch is not there for me. And I feel much more fulfilled in this entrepreneurial space, working at home in my pajamas, <laughs> speaking at conferences, not in my pajamas, obviously, and doing all the other things that I do that bring me joy, bring me fulfillment and put food on the table. So for you, your story is different, obviously, and you need to be able to conceptualize and verbalize, as I say in the original blog post, what your new career vision and mission are. I've written about this before. I podcasted and blogged about mission and vision, so I'm not going to go deep into that piece right now. But you can overcome career drift. You can overcome being off course once you can catch a glimpse of what you truly want at this point in your life. So you need to look at your motivators, the things that motivate you, the things that make you want to be the nurse who you are or that you aspire to be. You can identify these in many ways. You can work with a coach like me or a life coach or a career counselor, but you don't necessarily have to work with a professional like me. This can be done on your own. There's lots of ways to evaluate what you want in your life. Some of us like to have that professional guidance, but some of us have the wherewithal to do it ourselves, or we have friends or family or colleagues who are able to walk with us on that journey. So maybe you've realized that you really want to work with children now. There's some deep-seated part of yourself that you really want to heal, and part of the way you can heal that is to work with children. Or maybe you really want to work with underserved populations now. Maybe you want to become fluent in Spanish by doing an immersion in Guatemala for a few months and then come back and work in the inner city with Latino populations. Or maybe you realize that working with veterans is the way that you want to honor the legacy of members of your family who've been in the military. It's not that important to identify these specific pieces right away. First, like I said earlier, you have to identify what's going on for you and then start digging into the motivators and the desires that are driving this next potential chapter of your career. Whatever it happens to be, the sky's the limit, the world is your oyster, but you have to get to this place of being able to narrow down what it is that you want, create a new vision, a new mission for yourself, and then feel that that mission and vision really represent what you want in this next iteration, this next chapter of your life and your career. And if you can do that, you can then start to look for work, look for jobs and opportunities that will hopefully fulfill at least some aspect of that new vision that you would like to create for yourself. So friends, when you want to get the mission of your career, the mission and vision of your life back on course, this process is very important. This process of digging deep into who you are, into what you truly want, into where you want to go and how you want to be in the world. Now, I'll tell you, many nurses come to me because they are feeling that the type of nursing they chose is no longer working for them. I also have nurses come to me who feel like their bodies just can't keep up with the type of nursing that they've loved all these years, or they've come to me because they feel like 
healthcare is changing around them and the type of nursing they used to love no longer works for them anymore because the documentation is just too intense or the competition for jobs is just too much or the healthcare institutions they've been working for just don't function the way they used to. Some people who work in hospice say that hospice has been corporatized to a large extent, that hospice isn't what it was back in the 1970s and 1980s or even the 90s. And they say that hospice feels just not quite as loving and compassionate and patient-based as it used to. It's more based on productivity and documentation and regimentation, and they're not feeling they have the freedom to be the hospice nurses they want to be. I've worked in home health for several decades, and home health is the same way. It's very much related to hospice, and yes, it has been corporatized to a large extent. There are very large corporate entities who've taken over a great deal of the home health space around the country. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. You can find mom and pop home health agencies, which have their own inherent problems. You can find regional or citywide or even just locally based home health agencies that are more pleasant to work for, but they all have their challenges. Some people feel that emergency nursing has changed a great deal and they just don't like the paperwork and the documentation anymore, or they don't like the, the higher acuity that's happening, or they don't like the way that so many uninsured people have to use the emergency room for primary care because they don't have access to regular primary health care. There's lots of ways that we can get frustrated in our nursing careers. And there's lots of ways in which what we originally thought we would be doing, what we thought would be the reason for being for our nursing careers, just doesn't really cut the mustard anymore. So I want you to try this. I want you to try first writing down what you believe was the vision of your nursing career that you had when you were first in nursing school. This might come in the form of a list of words or attributes or adjectives that describe what you were after and what really lit you up and lit your fire and got you out of bed in the morning when you were in nursing school, even though you probably wanted to stay in bed because you were exhausted. Or it might come in the form of several paragraphs or even several pages if you have a lot to say about what led you at first down this particular professional path. Once you've identified those and once you've really written out and feel some clarity around what brought you to nursing in the first place, then I want you to make a list of all the different types of positions or even the places where you've worked over this period of your career that you're evaluating. Whether it's two years, five, 10, 50, it doesn't really matter. Make a list of the types of milieus you've worked in. Then I want you to start to evaluate what about those milieus, those facilities or organizations or types of nursing, what worked for you? And then make a list of what didn't work for you or what isn't working for you. And then I want you to take a look at that list and then decide, are there aspects of that that you can now get behind? Are there aspects of that that you feel like you could still bring to bear in your nursing career, but you just need maybe a different place to work. Maybe you need a different specialty to work within where you can feel more comfortable or more aligned with where you are in your life. Now, this is the professional career evaluation. Next, I want to look at your personal life. Write down for yourself a list or a paragraph about what was going on in your life when you first went to nursing school and got out of nursing school. Maybe you were single, just out of high school, and you decided to go to nursing school and start a new career in your early 20s. Maybe you came in as a second career. Maybe you worked in advertising, or design, or architecture, whatever it happened to be, and you decided to pursue a second career as a nurse in your 30s, or your 40s, or your 50s even, or maybe even your 60s. What was happening in your life when you decided to go into nursing? Now you need to look at what's happening in your life now. Are your children 10 or 20 years older? Are your parents 10 or 20 years older? You are obviously 
10 or 20 years older? What's changed? Has your health changed? Are your children more needy or less needy than they used to be? How about your parents or your spouse? What's your living situation like? Maybe when you first went to nursing school, you lived in a little one room studio and it didn't really matter and you were happy, but now you're married and you have four children and you live in a big house and there's a big mortgage and there's lots of overhead and so many more responsibilities than when you first went into nursing. And maybe you realize that working in that busy ICU is just wearing you down and right now you need a desk job. Maybe you want to be a public health nurse in your hometown, whatever that happens to be. Doing this evaluation, really delineating for yourself what came before and what's happening now, that will help you evaluate what has changed, what's been the trajectory from that point to this point. And once you get here, it's easier to start to realize what you want. So once you've looked at your professional life and your personal life and that trajectory that's happened since you became a nurse, went to nursing school and entered the profession and started working as a healthcare professional, now you need to look at what is it that you really want? What are the factors that influence the type of job that you would now choose to work in? Who are the types of people you'd like to work with in terms of colleagues and also patient population? Or if you're done with the patient population, who do you want to work with? Do you want to teach, let's say, in an LPN program? Do you want to teach at a four-year college? Do you have your master's or PhD and you want to teach in a higher level postgraduate program? Decide what it is you are after now. Maybe after serving in a highly regulated environment, you'd like to be in an environment that's a little looser, that feels a little more comfortable, where you can express yourself. Maybe entrepreneurship is what you really need because you want to be able to work from home like I do and so many other nurse entrepreneurs do. There's so many different directions you could go. There are so many different roads and doors opening up for nurses, but you just have to identify what it is that you want. Now, circling back to our mission and our vision and mission drift, well, when you feel you have drifted from your mission, when you feel that your career and your lifestyle and your work style are no longer aligned with your mission, with the vision of the life that you want to be leading as a nurse and as a human being, doing these types of assessments are important. And one of the most crucial aspects of doing this type of inner work is that you be brutally honest with yourself, but extremely and supremely compassionate. I want to repeat that again. The most important thing here is for you to be brutally honest with yourself about everything I've been talking about, and at the same time, be radically, supremely compassionate with yourself. Because when you're doing this kind of realignment of your life and your career, it's easy to get in the place of berating yourself for making bad choices or getting angry with yourself for no longer being able to handle the ER or the ICU. And I say handle with air quotes around it. Or maybe you blame yourself for that divorce you went through and you realize that it was your fault or you blame yourself for it and you think, oh, that's why my career is down the drain because I got divorced when I brought it on myself. No, you need to be compassionate. You need to realize that you've made these choices in your life for a reason. You've taken certain turns for a reason. You've been led in certain directions because of the motivators, because of the desires that were behind the choices that you made. And if you could be compassionate with yourself while also being brutally honest and really being clear with yourself about what's happening, that will get you further than ruminating, beating yourself up, berating yourself, and getting into self-blame and self-recrimination when what you truly need is to be gentle and honest and compassionate and forthright and then plan for a brighter future.
My friends, I hope this has been inspiring to you. I hope that if you're in a difficult spot right now in your life, that you'll consider doing these types of exercises that I've outlined. If you need more support doing this, I am happy to help you. Email me at keith at nursekeith.com. Let's set up a 30-minute complimentary strategy session to talk about your concerns and your desires and your motivations and what you want to create for yourself. And we can have a nice little chat and make a plan. I really want you to feel uplifted and inspired, and I want you to take some inspired action in the interest of your life and your career, no matter what that action happens to be. Maybe you just need to take a couple months off. Maybe you need a radical change. Maybe you need to go back to school, or maybe you just need to find a new job. Whatever it happens to be, you want to make sure the changes you make are aligned with the vision of the life that you want to lead from this day forward. It doesn't matter what you wanted when you were 22 and a new nurse. It doesn't matter what you wanted when you graduated from nursing school at 37 and started a second career. It matters what you want now. And remember, this is all subject to change. You don't carve your mission and vision of your life and career in stone and hold to it for the rest of your life. No. You write it, you cross things out, you use white out, you tear up the paper, you write up another one, you crumple that one up, you write up another mission until you come to the place that works for you in this moment. And five or 10 years from now, you may need to do this again. But you know what? That's exciting. That is where change happens. That is where inspiration comes from. So if you can move forward having a renewed vision, that will help you get away from this mission drift and create a new trajectory that really feels aligned with who you are in this moment today. Did you know that you could become a patron of The Nurse Keith Show, my friends? That's right. You can join my friend and listener, Bradley Sandoval, who supports The Nurse Keith Show monthly because he gets so much value from it. He went over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Nurse Keith. And he pledged a monthly amount to support the show. You don't have to do it forever, but you can do it for a few months. Get a couple gifts from me and a thank you for your generosity in return and support helping this show reach more and more nurses around the country and around the world. The Nurse Keith Show is edited and produced by the wonderful Tim Hollowell and his team at thepodcastinggroup.com, and social media and promotion are handled by the fantastic Mark Cappy Spiesen. I'm always thanking Mark and Tim and Tim's team for their help because I couldn't do this without them. Sign up for my newsletter at nursekeith.com. You can even leave me a voicemail at nursekeith.com by clicking on the bright pink banner on the left-hand side of the screen. I will even play your message on air and answer your question for everyone to hear. Remember to check out the Pulse Media Network at pulsemedianetwork.com and head over to Amazon to buy my new book, Aspire to be Inspired creating a nursing career that matters. That is over there for you. It is inspiration for the nurse's heart and mind. Folks, I want you to stay positive, care for yourself and others, take inspired action in the interest of your nursing career, and tune in again as we continue to explore how to make your nursing career more satisfying and inspired and keep your mission and vision aligned with who you want to be. Be well, dig deep, create success, seek joy, keep in touch, And I'll be back next time wishing you well from beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. Adios. 